Hello, everyone. I think we might be live, but we're going to wait until chat chimes in and says, hey, yes, we're actually live. Can we be seen and heard? Is that a whole thing? I'm seeing the anticipation. I'm seeing some guys in chat. Here we go. Here we go. Somebody love me. Give me a sound and test. Are we live? Can we be seen and heard? I can see us. I wonder, can we be heard? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, we've been live for a long few seconds. Oh, God. Did I say anything <laughs> embarrassing? Was it weird? Yeah, uh, whatever. Welcome to Chaosium, guys. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live chat with Adam and Goomph, the designers of Horror on the Orient Express, the board game, a brand new tabletop adventure from Chaosium, currently live on Kickstarter with guys. Let's talk about the figures. Over 6,000 backers. It blew through the funding goal within the first 10 minutes and is currently sitting on over $500,000. Tribe Chaosium community, that is you guys. That is you. That is you. That is you. Massive thank you for the support. The anticipation is amazing. Uh, I personally can't scroll through my social media page right now without seeing people sharing, exclaiming, excited, excited, excited. So Thank you to the Chaosium community for making something like this so, 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 so incredibly successful. You guys are the rock stars. This is going to be the AMA, the Ask Me Anything, hosted by Chaosium's Bridget. <laughs> hosted by me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with our live participants and then you guys there in the chat who are asking questions from all over the world. So we are going to dive in and talk about more of the process of designing this immersive co-op adventure in the world of Call of Cthulhu, board game designs, and more and more and more. Now, these two incredible gentlemen just finished another interview and they like baseball slid over here. So go easy on them, go easy on us, and we're going to get this started. Would you two please start off with introductions? We're going to start with Adam. Tell us who you are, what you do, and just kind of like your background into the hobby. Like, like let us know who you guys are. Who are you? Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm game designer. That's uh, that's kind of obvious, obvious uh, here. And uh, I play games uh, from, I don't know, it's almost 40 years for me. Uh, I play a lot of RPGs, uh, tabletop RPGs uh, before, and then I jump into the board games. I start designing them uh, like 10 years for, for now, or uh, or maybe maybe a little longer. And in this case, I, I have a pleasure to design it with uh, another designer, Go on. And Go on, hit us, baby. Introduce yourself to us. <laughs> That's me. Hi, I'm Gom, uh, and I'm also a board game designer, uh, which fortunately brought me to Adam and <laughs> gave me an opportunity to design a game with him, uh, which is which is a blast, uh, which you can clearly see in the in the game, uh, which has both perks of our both talents, the complexity, the quality, and everything from Adam and the the other stuff from me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, the, obviously, I go for the bling and theatri theatricality. <laughs> These are my two favorite parts. Uh, but then again, I'm also a board game designer for uh, with quite a few years uh, with experience of uh, over 10 uh, now. And yeah, I'm very happy to be here today. I'm so stoked because you guys are both sweethearts and absolutely amazing. So. We know a little bit about the designers. Let's talk about why we're here. The Horror on the Orient Express board game. Not the tabletop role-playing game, guys. The board game. Can you talk us through, uh, let's start at the beginning. How long have you been working on it? The conception? Kind of give us broad strokes on how you went from this might be a cool idea to blowing the doors off of a Kickstarter. Oh, it's uh, it's always uh, you know a long ride uh, when you talk about uh, designing a, a board game. So it takes uh, more than two years uh, now, I think, uh, when uh, when first time uh, Kuba came to me with the uh, idea, and uh, and it was great time because uh, I know Goom for for a while, and uh, 
know that uh, it will be great to design the, a game with uh, with him. Uh, and this was the perfect opportunity because he was ending his job in other companies. So when I know about this, uh, I just called him and said, OK, can we can we meet? Can we talk about uh, uh, design something together? Because I have a thing, the perfect game that fits uh, our design. And uh, yeah, this is. Uh, this is how it how it starts. So yeah, we've been courting each other for so long, <laughs> trying to get yeah. an opportunity to get a game. And yeah, uh, when I, when Adam came to me and said there is this grandiose opportunity of bringing Horror on the Orient Express to the board game genre, I was like, a game with you and such a game, I'm all in. So yeah, super excited. <laughs> Guys, again, congratulations, congratulations. So two years in the making, which is absolutely spectacular for the first 10 minutes, the entire world to go, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, which is <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, let's have a conversation with Bridget really fast because despite this game um, being set up as a prototype with Kuba at Chaosium Con and it's being debuted at, uh, well, not being debuted, it was actually sampled and put out at Gen Con and various cons all over the world. Bridget has not played this board game yet. Haven't touched it. Oh. So I know, I know, I know. So sell me on the experience right now. What exactly is Horror on the Ori Express, the, the board game? What can I expect from sitting down as a non-board gamer, mind you, playing this game? Oh, okay. So Gomp is the best to uh, sell the game. He's much more enthusiastic in the, <laughs> in the back. So I will pass it to him. So the very first thing uh, that we'll promise you is a theatrical experience. A hugely uh, emergent narrative that happens straight up from the gameplay rules. You learn the rules, you learn the game, you fail miserably because it's obviously a, uh, Adam's game, but you fail to win and not fail to have fun. You actually, there's so much happening, so many events, so many cool stuff, so many magical moments. Uh, this is bound to happen. This is every single gameplay starts with Big Bang and then grows from it with the vampire uh, lurking in the shadows, with the passengers being killed all around, with the essence of reality seeping through the portals and spawning new monstrosities at approaching your train. Everything all at once. Just as in the Oscar uh, no, no, uh, awarded movie, the everything uh, everywhere all at once. That's what's happening here. <laughs> and with a uh, very uh, what I really enjoy, a safe medium, because even though there's so much happening, it's at your own pace, at your own, uh, at your own velocity, at your own velocity, have everything happening there. So you can enjoy every single moment, every single uh, thing that's there. I mean, I'm and excited. it's fully cooperative. So you're all against the, bo the board game. So there are no weird people uh using the board game knowledge against you they're on your team and they're helping you to win against the game we are the bad guys here yeah. the designers oh, <laughs> oh good to know so i know who to blame i know who to blame you guys are the bad yeah. guys okay so just to kind of dive into that a little bit further here there's there's no like alpha player syndrome when playing this game it's absolutely cooperative from start to finish it is it's absolutely co uh, fully cooperative uh, the game is, uh, the, uh, the alpha player syndrome, as you mentioned, is a thing that uh, happens when one player tells others, uh, I, I assume you know that, but may, maybe some people uh, uh -huh. Coaches. won't know around. So uh, it's, a, it's a situation when one player uh, tells the other what to do, therefore uh, just stealing the fun from them, because it's not fun to have their own agency. And uh, so the major uh, two ways of not happening uh, in our game is the game is sort of complex in what happens there. It's not difficult to grasp what is happening, but it's complex as in the mechanisms interlock in so many ways uh, that there is no obvious comparative answer. So like, is it better oh. to scare off the vampire or to remove the essence? And there is not like a response, yeah, this is better because they're two vastly different things. And as a player, you can choose your own way of approaching the, uh, the problems that are there. So it's very difficult for other players to tell you what to do because there's no proper way of playing there. Interesting. And and Adam, at this conception, was that an intentional decision on your guys' end to build the game in that type of that type of profile? 
Uh, no, you know, it's uh, it's a very common problem with the cooperations uh, mm. game, and uh, and this was uh, one of our main focus to uh, to avoid that. And uh, still, we want to uh, have people cooperate with each other. So, yeah. uh, the important thing uh, here is that uh, someone can ask you uh, for a help. For example, I need some happy people in my car because I will. Uh, do something more powerful, but uh, the the person who is asking uh, for that uh, don't know how you can do this because you see uh -huh. your own skill before you and you can find the best way to provide provide them uh, those uh, uh, happy people, for example, which is not so easy in the train like this. Being happy is a weird thing there. <laughs> Which actually leads me to a personal question that Bridget has. Do I need to be familiar with the campaign in order to play the board game? No, totally not. This was the uh, the second important thing. We want to uh, let people play who don't know the uh, original campaign because okay. uh, 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 because it's not the same, exact the same story. We don't want to uh, okay. spoil anything and we also don't know uh, don't want to check the knowledge about uh, about the uh, campaign uh, it's uh, uh, when we try to adapt something and mm -hmm. we try to adapt uh, uh, rpg campaign it's more about using tools you have in this medium like uh, uh, board games here to give the same spirit the same feel that you are playing that campaign, but of course you have different tools to do this. And this is uh, what, what our focus was. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so this leads into uh, a great question that was kind of like preloaded for me. What is the vibe of this particular board game? Like, is it more like Pulp Cthulhu, let's punch Cthulhu in the face, or is it like super creepy classic? Like, give me an idea like, you know, what to expect just as, as a vibe when I sit down to play this board game. So I would say neither of these. Oh, <laughs> so, here we go. Let's so go. great option, yeah. Uh, so uh, certainly, uh, the one thing is uh, there is not much of a like. A, I'll start with the negative answer, and only then I build up to a proper <laughs> full okay. response. Yeah. So uh, there is not much of a like a proper your the kind of uh, usual RPG board game, RPG inspired board games with fighting, punching, get a sword, get an armor, get a shield, and just stop the bad guys and stop the monsters. Uh, this is not, not this kind of game. It's more about the immersive s story, like the, um, the story that emerges through, through the our experience. And so it's more like the, I would say, it's more akin to the uh, horror, uh, to the murder on the Orient Express, as in exploration of what's happening around. So many things oh. uh, being there, passengers talking, quests happening, people having their own moods, opinions on stuff, their needs and being actually an investigator. So yeah, this is the point. A big point of Call of Cthulhu games is being an investigator. It's called like the players are investigators. They're not uh, called fighters or killers or someone. They're investigators. They want to learn the story, know what's happening. And this is the main focus of the game is on establishing the narrative both on your own, forcing the game to do what you prefer, that's what the game prefers to do with you, but also Ooh. to learn what's happening uh, behind the stage. Oh, nice. Oh, great answer, by the way. That was absolutely phenomenal. Well done. Well done. Okay. Uh, chat, you guys are on fire. Massive love to you for that. I am like, uh, <laughs> tech support in the background is shooting me questions on another screen right now. So uh, just to kind of break away from uh, my questions, because yes, I'm curious <laughs> and want to know what's going on too. We're going to jump into a couple questions from the audience, and then we'll get back into more of the conversation piece. So uh, here is a question from the audience. Is it true that a campaign mode is being developed? Oh yeah, that's uh, we start with, uh, yeah, yeah, we start with a hard yeah. question. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we heard the rumors that uh, this is true. Uh, something like this. <laughs> it can happen in 
and you can uh, probably you will see it in a couple of days we have some surprises on the campaign and uh, uh, yeah i think uh, i think yeah we have a proper and direct write. non response to this question <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was beautiful, by the way, because the look on both of your faces was like. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and this means that uh, really people who, uh, who are on chat know what to ask about. No. <laughs> now we, we are scared now. Yeah, let's let's do this. OK, OK, so I tell you what, um, that was a hard ball. That's fair. That's fair. We'll go to something a little bit more gentle also from chat. Uh, brace yourself. I like this question, though. What mechanic were you most sad to cut from the game development process? Ooh, nice one. That's a good one, right? Yeah. That's a dope Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, I think we both are on uh, on the side of cutting off mechanics because we love ele elegant uh, design and uh, uh, it's it's important to uh, to have the feel of uh, something happening, but still we want uh, uh, the complexity of rules not so high. It's not uh, uh, it's not about learning the game for one or two hours and then play. We want something uh, uh, something much faster. So uh, I think uh, I think the the one one of the last things we changed uh, in mm. uh, in the game was. Uh, uh, how uh, spells works. Uh, this was the uh, last change, and uh, uh, we still have spells in the game because we want players to use some occult uh, powers and uh, get a little insane because of that. This is how uh, Call of Cthulhu works. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we cut uh, off some complex mechanic that was connected mm. to that, and uh, we figure out how to make it a little simpler still giving people uh interesting decision and choices yeah so so actually i would say that uh everything we loved every every really cool thing we we put in the game from in the in any moment of the development process uh we never if it's really cool we never cut it totally away we just try to extract the essence of it and oh. either keep it as a small thing or just let's say cram it into uh, other other stuff so the coolest thing is still there because if it's a cool thing and if we are excited about it then i assume people will also be excited yeah i mean and if i cannot be excited how can people be and <laughs> the, the opposite must be also true yeah and we also are stubborn together so uh, <laughs> it's hard to cut off something that we love uh, that you, you love know. yeah uh, chat, that was honestly a brilliant question, and you two, way to knock that bad boy out of the park. Okay, so the next yeah, question bring here, more. We're chat is on fire. Listen, the Chaosium tribe don't play. There, there, there's some fun people. All right, here is your next question: Is there going to be a demo or playable version on Tabletop Simulator? Okay, yes, uh, we, are, we are. We are pre we are prepared to do this one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and yes, the, there will be during the campaign in a couple of days, we will uh, give people access to the tabletop simulation uh, simulator uh, with with the game to let them play. And what is uh, for us even more important to uh, gather the feedback because uh, there will be some questions uh, uh, and form uh, people uh, can uh, uh, can feel after after playing and we will uh, take that feedback because we are still developing the game and we really want to uh, create it with with community and make it as good as it uh, can be and also what is uh, what is important for us we want people to know what they buy because yeah. the uh, the worst thing that can happen during uh, crowdfunding is that uh, we sell something to people because they see pretty, uh, pretty graphic and illustration and all the stuff. And it is pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> and it is here, pretty. Here is really pretty. But they imagine totally different game in their head, and then yeah. when the game uh, get to their doors, they play it and think, "Oh, this is not the game I want." We. Uh, it's more important for us to have less customers but happy customers at the end then more but people who 
uh, have totally different expectations because they cannot check what the game uh, is on on Kickstarter. So yeah. yeah. And also, if, even though we are pretty good designers, I would say, people are way better players than we are. We are doing the game, but people are playing the game and yeah. we need to have an input from players and not from the designers. So right. having people play the game is crucial. And as, as, as far as it goes, today I was just adding some more like automation stuff to the tabletop simulator so that uh, the setup goes smoothly and everything. So it's just like the game is already there. I'm just, we're just polishing the, the stuff so that it's uh, like the, the the computer version doesn't go in a way of having the board game uh, experience. Yeah. Oh, guys, way to crush that answer too. Um, just again, as somebody who doesn't do board games, who hasn't put their hand on this product yet, I appreciate the intentionality of you guys saying like, no, the integrity of what we present matters. Here's exactly what you're gonna get. This is the exact type of you know play style and experience you're gonna get. One, I appreciate that integrity. Uh, as a designer. The other thing I really appreciate is you being so intentional about collecting feedback from the people who are going to be playing the games. To your point, yeah, the designers can give all type of feedback and go back and back, but you're selling this to the tribe. You're selling this to the community. You're selling this to us, to me. So it's important if I go like, none of this makes sense. And you go, you're right. Hold on. We're going to fix that and we'll come right back. So thank you for those two very intentional decisions that you guys are making. Okay. I'm going to pull you out of the hot seat. We're going to do something fun. And Kuba, right. I hope you love me through this because I'm making this up <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> Kuba's going to hit me up in Slack like, little mama, what are you doing? Okay. These are some of the preloaded questions that I have. And I think this would be fun if I do rapid fire. If I just ask the question, we go around in a circle, and then I'm going to ask the next one and the next one. It's a three-part question. Round one, what's your favorite skill in the game? Round two, what's your favorite spell? in the game. Round three, what's your favorite passenger card? We're going to go and we're going to hit it fast. Adam, favorite skill? Uh, Finding from the retired gunslinger. Uh, you know, the fast, uh, shooting fast with his uh, revolver. It's uh, uh, it's nice. It's thematic because you can shoot only six times because this is how many bullets you have in your uh in your revolver and yeah this is uh, this is uh, one of my favorite skill and i'm also a fan of uh, western so yeah <gasps> nice okay gonf what's your favorite skill i really like this small story told by help from papa from the millionaire boy it's like he's unable to do anything on his own but he can go like oh papa come on help me with the portals and everything <laughs> could you <laughs> and i really like this small like that he can all, uh, only affect the it's a skill that affects past landscapes so he has to have time <laughs> to call call papa and <laughs> get a help from him <laughs> it only affects past landscapes okay that's dope yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's pretty dope. That's pretty so, okay. so It has to be a problem that's already there and you have to be past it. And on, only then you can get help from a papa. <laughs> okay. That's that's dope. Okay. That's brilliant. Okay. Round two, going fast. We're going to hit you at a favorite spell and why. Okay. It, it will be it will be easier because uh, we have the same spell. Uh, that, uh, no, you don't. Favorite. You don't get to take but, my spell. <laughs> but uh, I have to be honest that uh, this was the uh, go on idea. Uh, this was uh, a spell he creates and I love it. It's about uh, removing the car from the game. So uh, really gone, truly gone. And you can remove the whole car and make train a little. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it sometimes happens. Spells are powerful, <laughs> interesting, and uh, and sorry, go up uh, for that. Yeah, it's the, it's the one that's with us almost from the very beginning. Most of the aspects of the game change, and the spell is just remove the last card from the game. <laughs> and every single time we write a rule, we write anything, we have problems with proper wording from it, but yeah. the spell is <laughs> so much fun. It's just such an exciting thing to just break the game and take the car with everything and just like a magician really gone Whoosh. it's truly gone and it's not there and just remove it so it stays with that with us forever yeah removing a whole car from the train is so petty and it's amazing <laughs> that is awesome well done okay i can see why you guys have the same one okay rapid fire going again what is your favorite passenger card uh, okay so i uh, i love the uh, bleeding out card this is very very simple card but uh, tells you all the story because passengers 
can be wounded and uh, one of the face of the uh, uh, passenger die die is wounded uh, passenger okay. and if nobody cares about them if there are no uh, happy people happy helpful people around them in the same car they just bleed out and you put a coffin on it so uh, keep them and safe the keep them so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and true that, that's that's also true I like it. Okay. Okay. My favorite spell is uh, passenger card. Sorry. Uh, my favorite passenger card is Into the Nightmare. I really like uh, It's about passengers waking up into the dream. So it's like this very reversal of like usually you would expect that you wake up off the dream and you wake yeah. up into the dream and new passengers are appearing in the train with, <laughs> within the sleeping cars. So like they wake up and they're then in the dream. So like this, this story, like this is my favorite type of storytelling, like just uh, taking some expectations and they're just flipping them on their head. Yeah. And they are panicked. They are panicked when they oh, wake they're, up. Oh, they're big time panic. Obvious. Yeah, you don't want to wake up on this train, to be honest, as a passenger. The, the, oh, okay. Wait. Wow. Way to sell that, guys. That was brilliant across the board. Uh, congratulations. You survived your three round of interrogation <laughs> there. We like it. We like it. Uh, I'm going to jump back over here to my drive. I have a tough question coming. So just yeah, know great. I, I, I am choosing to give you a fun one before we start like really <laughs> digging at you. So here's your last fun one before I jump into this tough one. Uh, what additional train cars are being cooked up? Is a casino car a possibility? Those faces. Oh, <laughs> now, now, now this is interesting because, to be honest, uh, so it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> until now. it might be now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we don't think about casino car, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of uh, interesting idea. Uh, I think it is a little connected uh, with the question we couldn't answer before about the uh -huh. campaign. <laughs> so uh, we cannot tell you a lot about uh, new kind of cars in the core game. Uh, uh, there will be uh, six cars and locomotive, but in each yeah. game only three of them will have active abilities, so each game will be uh, different. But in the campaign, there can be a new cars, but we cannot spoil it to it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair. You guys ready? You ready for this big one? Yeah. Bring you it on. Get a, a sip of water before I pull this whole screen on top of you <laughs> and read it off. All right. All right. All right. You were braced. You can't say this came out of left field. All right, tough question. With changing shipping prices and production costs, how positive are you? How positive are you that you will be able to produce and ship this game without ex or asking for extra funds, like a lot of other companies have had to do? Oh, this one, yeah, I can answer this easily. Oh, here we go. I'm a I'm a board game designer. I have literally no idea. This is chaos. Team that's <laughs> that's yeah. the one to. To answer the question, we're not the production team. Uh, though the people we work with are amazing people, like they're specialists in their jobs. They're re really confident and everything they say has been double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked. They have uh, plenty of experience in, in the topic. Uh, so based on my experience with work on working with them, I expect for what, what they say is well checked and true. Yeah, okay. Uh... You know, I uh, I have a couple of uh, design that was uh, uh, crowdfunded during uh, pandemic. So uh, mm -hmm. and they are uh, uh, they are Finnish people get their games, and it was uh, not a, a not easy time because of the changing the prices and all the stuff. So uh, I believe it's. Uh, 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 it's doable, and the team uh, have all the knowledge uh, we uh, uh, we need to uh, to do this, to manage this. But of course, uh, to be honest, we are living uh, in crazy times, and we, we know are. what we know what happens in a couple of last years. So we never yeah, actually the horror is a safe space for, my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah, us to now. Be, uh, to be honest, horror is a uh, safe space for us. And yeah, the, the, real, the real world is much more scary than uh, the world in uh, in the game itself. So uh, we cannot, we never cannot be sure in times like uh, this that uh, there will be no events that change everything uh, around. Yeah, but us. Th though, but, 
we are uh, also uh, we and uh, by, by saying we I, I mean people that are not me obviously uh, <laughs> uh, we are way more experienced in managing such events because uh, so many things happened in the past few years so now building your offers building your expectations working with shipping partners working with all the companies we are yeah. way smarter than we were in the golden times of Kickstarter like offering one dollar free play no what something 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 yeah everything is already thought of and should be ju just as as on the screen yeah and how you have 50 years of experience you yeah. know they are uh, they are older companies uh, that us so uh, we we think they have experience <laughs> no yeah absolutely so and that's one of the beautiful things because the products that chaosium puts out are stunning and they stick to the yeah. word yeah that's true and that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing to be able to have that type of trust into a product that you're investing in, because that's what you're doing. You're investing in this product and this experience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, beautiful. I'll just, I'll oh, just uh, add one more thing for that. Uh, also, uh, to mitigate any possible problems, uh, this is also why we have already the playable game that you, people will be able to play on, like the TTS yep. that they can try. So we don't want. Uh, uh, so we want to have the game as much ready as possible within the confines of what we had, like the t in terms of uh, budgeting and style and, and the feedback from people. So the game is still in the development, but it's as finalized as possible within the confines of what we have. So uh, the time from now to the delivery t is as short as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So to make less room for events to happen in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well said, well said. And then I'm gonna forward you guys a compliment that I'm able to see with chat. And chat, I love you guys so much because I've got so many screens up and everything is going on. Um, but to you two, uh, DE Miniature and Board Games responded, well answered, was a tough question. I am sold, like what I see already. Yeah, thank to you. To the community, much. thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank oh, you. That's the hard answers my life. <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, Kuba in production staff is uh, working tirelessly on getting your guys' questions from the chat imported into a Google Drive that I'm looking at. Uh, he's getting them organized for me. So uh, it looks like I got a new list going. You guys are doing great Ooh. in chat. I know, right? I love, I love, I love when things come together. All right. Next question: Will there be a companion app? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah, this is easy question. We uh, <laughs> we don't want uh, companion app uh, here. Uh, people know there will be uh, music uh, for uh, for the game. There's uh, big pr probability of uh, of that because this is some uh, social strategy goal. Uh, but this is all we want uh, people. Uh, uh, all device we want people to use uh, during yeah. the game. Also, the game is designed in such a way that it doesn't need any kind of companion app. So, like the Look core gameplay, okay. like the gameplay loop is super simple. You make your actions, you draw a token, you move, you move the train, you're done. So there is no need for like an extra components which would actually uh, <laughs> hinder the flow of the game. So yeah, yeah. Like you said, well answered and easy to go. All right, Kuba has my next one teed up. Could a campaign mode include a little? Could a campaign mode include stops along the way, like Paris and Venice? <laughs> oh, look at these faces again! Yeah, uh, it could. <laughs> yeah, that's that's proper proper answer. It could. Yeah, <laughs> it could. Stick with that one. It could. I, oh, that is I great. Mean, uh, there is like there, there's this thing. Uh, if there is the campaign expansion, if. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, it uh, if it would be <laughs> it would be based on the original Orient uh, Orient Express route, uh, so the major stops there could be possible. There also uh, bonus points for people uh, with good research uh, skills. There are uh, some hints on where you can go within already the game. And. So, yeah. Go on, for look for some... visuals, playthroughs, and anything. We already dropped some hints. We That's dropped some true. hints. Okay. And I'm seeing um, <laughs> the mythos are speaking to me. Uh, I have, we have not planned for it. That's smooth. That's smooth. That's smooth. We like it. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, next question. It looks like, oh, 
chat, did you guys come up with this? Because this is such a Bridget question. I like the fluffy questions where like I can understand your guys' empathy towards game design or your internal creative process. What is your best or most funny memory from playing the game? Oh, oh right? Uh, That's a great question. I personally yeah, love that. That's a really good one. <laughs> That's a yeah, beautiful yeah, question. Yeah, this is a uh, this is good one. And uh, I, I remember uh, playing with, uh, with Goomp uh, because uh, uh, we, we tested the game for, for a long time and uh, uh, people, we see that uh, people play on the highest difficulty level because this is what we want to test first. This was our, uh, our approach. And uh, people lose in most time. There, there were, there, they were losing. So uh, we uh, we sit with Goamp and said, okay, this is the time we should win the game. To tell people this is winnable game on this level of difficulty, we we should uh, sit and uh, uh, play it, focusing only uh, on winning, like uh, not designing thing, but focusing on winning exactly like player players uh, will do and what was fun uh, at that time the difficulty level was much higher than now uh, it is because we uh, lose at the end we lose the game uh, the game will win with us and uh, uh, yeah yeah it was uh, it was totally fun we was uh, it was very intense for us that uh, for me I forgot that uh, I'm playing game of my own. I was on, yeah. I want to win. I want to win. I want to see uh, see that uh, uh, we can win together and uh, end the game. Uh, don't let us uh, to do that. Uh, we <laughs> and because of that, uh, we uh, we get some different difficulty levels and uh, lower it a, a, a little because uh, yeah, it was it was fun memory. <laughs> had to be such a great moment. It's like, wait, this is a game that I wrote. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we were very confident that we will win. That was that was again the game. The the game uh, make us uh, humble. I think this is the word here. I like that. Good answer. Good answer. How about you? I have so many great like memories and they're mostly i really enjoy these uh like, tiny magic moments is that, that happen in sparkle like i don't actually i wouldn't be able to pick a single one but i have a brand i, I would say a brand like a, a style of the moments i like uh when i uh, when i realize uh we made we made a game that is way better than i would expect based on our actually i have a really elevated uh, sense of myself <laughs> and even then uh even then the game we made uh has some things that are way better than uh what we expected some yeah. things just fit so neatly or like the small stories uh happen there and every time i encounter these i'm like oh this is this is why we work on this two years like this is why we spend the time because we create this nifty little things that happen there uh, like recently, uh, there was uh, we uh, I, we added one uh, one small attribute that upgraded the player's rest skill to a quality rest. I was like mm -hmm. su super happy with that because the thing I li <laughs> I like the most in my life is quality rest. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's not very often, not very often, and it's not, yeah. it's not very often. <laughs> and recently, I got to play the game again again uh, with with actual players, and I have drawn the attribute and they took it from me, and I was like. <gasps> Oh yeah, it feels so nice to have like this this small like the the, the thematic thing is uh, I was like uh, I we've added it to the game already some time ago. So I'm, I would say uh, I'm like detached from the process of creating it, and I'm already experience. Yeah, the time time is exactly. fast, and I'm already experiencing it almost as a player, and I had so much fun feeling like yeah, oh they're resting, and I'm like I'm the quality resting player. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Yeah. How cool is that for you to be the designers to be playing the game was like, this is awesome. Like how validating and magical is that guys? Like congratulations in this weird meta way of play or of creating a game that you enjoy playing. That's all the way back uh, to Adam's is, original point. This is, this is totally, uh, totally uh, great because uh, there is a moment where what you create mm -hmm. uh, came to life and you are, 
no more connected with it in the terms that it's always with you, you're part of the game. The game yeah. starts live on its own. And it's it starts when you show the game to uh, many other people. So you don't know. This is when it starts. And uh, of course, Kickstarter do the same because this is now out of our control. This is what we create. But now it's uh, uh, it have to uh, be on itself. Yeah, as a as a game. Yeah. This uh, this is what is uh, how it works. And when you can experience that after returning to game and you feel that okay this is something separate from me it's it's great experience it's uh, when you feel that you create something bigger than you and this is why why i love uh, co-design with uh, yeah. with people like goomp this is because the game is way better than the sum of our skills significantly exactly. yeah. yeah and also it is like as you said it's validating but also i uh, I am always very wary of uh, the thing that when people are playing uh, games I design, they're offering me, uh, me personally, hours of their life. So like they're choosing yeah. to spend some of that hours they have in their life to play the game I designed. And I'm always very humbled by the thing that they're, they're actually some, someone chooses it. And every time I see the game works, I feel like a good yeah it's it's great i haven't failed them it's it's a thing i i, I did them do, i did them good guys wow you guys are just I, i'm 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 personally excited right now you guys have me energized for the board game and i'm not a board gamer but you're selling it off the force of your own like energy your own creativity and your own passion in it like just you guys are crushing this and i can't believe you just came off another interview and you still have this type of energy and this type of awareness <laughs> of what's going on like you guys are out here crushing it bravo, Come on, bravo. We, have you, we have you here is that what it is? Like, <laughs> That's true. the questions the questions here are amazing yeah like, the questions really are good yeah. Chat is on fire. Yeah, listen, talk about team effort when the tribe gets together because Daria and Cooper in the background, you're saying it's me. Really, I'm leaning on them and they're leaning on chat. We, we, we've we got this all together. Yeah, we, we know that feeling. We also <laughs> lean on them on money in many ways. So, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're strong individuals to lean on. If you guys get a chance, if you're going to be at Chaosium Con coming up in like two weeks and plus a day, get a chance to get in front of these two incredible people. Get a chance to get in front of anybody from the tribe because it will... One, we're really accessible. Two, we love the same things that you do. We literally create the things that you do and we play the things that you do. So I'm yammering right now. So I hope you two are getting your water and taking your break because I'm buying time to get you guys caught up. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are very welcome. You're very welcome. So yeah, yeah, Chaosium Con uh, 2024 in Ann Arbor is a thing. So is Chaosium Con Australia. There will be links on that at some point. If I get a chance, I'll throw them into the chat. Actually, there are people here. Somebody throw the tabletop events up there for me. I love your face. Thank you. All right. Next question. Let's go. Oh, okay. Kuba, let me know if I do this wrong, but there was, or if I do this incorrectly, but there was a question in the chat that I'm actually going to answer from production staff in the background, which is, will the tabletop role-playing books be available as an add-on during the campaign or in the PM? And the answer for that right now is we have not planned on it. That's where we are right now with that. Um, sorry for the weird not planned on it like 10 minutes ago. I was reading it <laughs> on the wrong question. The struggle is real. Okay, so go on and Adam, I'm gonna have a quick confession with you. There are several words that Bridget just simply cannot pronounce, and I don't care. I have zero shame about it. Uh, <laughs> the no, linoleum floors that's a struggle for me. Uh, cep cephalopod cephalopods. That's a whole situation. I struggle with that one. And I am about to struggle with this upcoming character's name. So the question is, how many daily reveals until we get to the, is this Hercule Poirot character and many? How do you pronounce Hercule that Poirot. One more time. Hercule Poirot. I am he not going to try French. again, but it's he, beautiful. He knows French, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or as no, usual, uh, usually people in America say Hercules Poirot. Okay. Okay. Hercule Poriant? Poirot. Por Poirot. When was that character going to be available or revealed? <laughs> so, uh, answer in French, please. It will be, or in Latin. No. <laughs> because we cannot answer on that. We cannot answer that. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, as people can already see from the style we design our characters, uh, we do not do like, uh, like uh, co copy paste 
proper characters from like we do inspired characters uh so uh hint 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 hint, hint, hint. hint, hint. <laughs> uh but then we don't we don't do like uh, we uh, we usually don't go for proper names or for uh, for actual characters like call, like clones of actual people. Gotcha, gotcha, and that yeah. makes sense. Uh, just to echo on to what you're saying, I'm seeing in from production staff right now. It's like it's actually still under copyright in some countries. So there's a thing. Oh, there's copyright is a no, it's a mess. The time Disney. zones. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Copyright well, time, though, sonny. My, my fav favorite sh uh, favorite thing about uh, copyrights, I know, like uh, favorite trivia, is that uh, Sherlock Holmes is already in uh, uh, public domain. Uh, Doctor Watson is in public domain. First wife of Doctor Watson is in public domain. Second, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you said the second. Because she was introduced in later books, so not ma not many years have passed yet. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Okay uh where am i at where am i right now uh oh next question Ooh. oh i like nice it. One. yeah it's a nice one i mean it's a it's a it's a great question because i love the first part and then i love the vulnerability and the transparency of the second half of this question so <laughs> uh here's where we are right now how important is deduction in the game follow-up question if i'm not good at it will i still have fun Okay, so deduction is uh, one part of uh, of the game, but uh, it's uh, it's not the only thing you will be doing. This is not a deduction game. It has uh, have a deduction uh, part in it. But uh, uh, what we try to do is to make the uh, the deduction part uh, very easy, very approachable. But still uh, interesting. Uh, okay. Gomp is, uh, uh, and people probably don't know that, but uh, uh, Gomp uh, love puzzle games and create a lot of uh, uh, lot of games uh, of this uh, genre. So wait for uh, a shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we work really hard to make it uh, uh, understandable uh, for if for you know people. Polish. Please read one of my two books with puzzles. <laughs> yeah, if so you don't know free... Polish, tough luck. It's totally unavailable for you. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we think that, uh, you know, deduction is important part of uh, investigation. But still, yeah. like in tabletop RPG, it doesn't mean that you have the skills when you play uh, tabletop RPG to really investigate of course uh, you know everybody do some deduction during their life uh, even if they don't know that uh, and we want to keep it on uh, uh, on that level so uh, of course if you uh, if you uh, figure out something really smart about that uh, uh, that deduction part you will feel very satisfied but, uh, but and it, it will give you a slight player. edge but it's not like the the scope of what you will get is uh, it is better to be good at deduction, but mm. it's not significantly better. It's not a ma yeah. major skill or major anything. It's like it's nice like with an, with actually any skills in a board game. If you're good in approaching some part of the core, of the core concepts of the game, you will be doing better. And since this is one of uh, five concepts in the game, this will weigh a bit, but si still. Yeah. The uh, the puzzle is really approachable and really uh, yeah approachable is a good word. <laughs> no, that's a that's a great answer. Um, and honestly, to the viewer, to the chat member that expressed that, uh, thank you for one being transparent with your question and then following up with the why because that is important. If deduction, if this is a deduction game, I, I'm not good at deduction either. <laughs> this is not going to be the game for me. So I appreciate you going like, is this a thing? And this is why I'm asking. When you're dealing with two designers that actually care about the feedback from a community, those second questions, that second part of your vulnerability really does matter. Great it's question. way more important, yeah. Absolutely great question. That that introspection is bravo on you and it's just a great question. Okay, I am looking at the time right now. We are 50 minutes in. You two are Ooh. running an incredible marathon. Uh, I am going to let production staff in the background ping me on our little share drive and let me know if you want me to go for an hour and close it or whether you want me to take it for 90 minutes. I'm good either way. Y'all just let me know how you want to handle it. And while they're responding, I'm going to hop into the next question. 
Uh, oh, I find the great thing about co-op games is that the failure rate is usually high, even in the easiest setup, uh, where winning the game is a personal achievement. Is that the same here? And then in short, what is the winning rate of this game? <laughs> so I'll bring it up to the guy upstairs. <laughs> Because I, I, I've seen uh, on the video, Adam is uh, shown above me on the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so yeah, I, he's right above you too here. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here go one piece on my left, uh, on my screen. So yeah, it's, uh, it's different, but uh, okay. Uh, I always uh, think that in cooperative games, cooperative games can be uh, hard, to win or boring and uh, we want to we don't want to play boring games so uh, uh yes mm. the game is uh, uh it's not super easy to win it's uh, you shouldn't expect that first time you play the game you win the game because we think okay. it's not what should happen and uh, and also uh, we adapt uh, horror on the orient express the famous mm -hmm. campaign and uh, one of the uh, very famous thing about that campaign is uh, how many characters die uh, when you play that uh, campaign. So we have to uh, stay true to this uh, original work. Uh, so the game is, uh, is hard, but we have different difficulty levels, three different uh, difficulty levels. Uh, mm -hmm. Easy, normal and proper, like uh, uh, to name it, uh, uh, name it like it is in the in the rule book. And uh, uh, we think that, uh, you know, after after first play, this is totally, uh, totally uh, possible to win the game on one of the easier mode. Mm. Maybe not of the uh, the uh, most difficult one because it's uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. So this is the next question that got teed up, but I'm gonna do a quick story time for myself. So you guys feel free to get your water or stretch or like rest your voice here while I pretend to do this really fast. So uh, I've already said this. Kickstarter is all over my timeline. It's in all of the discords that I hang out. It's in all of the groups. There's a lot of a lot of excitement. I mean, duh, you guys blew the doors off of this Kickstarter in 10 minutes. But today I was on my phone messing around, probably when I should have been checking emails, but I was on Facebook. <laughs> and I saw that a new um a new character, a new passenger, what are they called? Like the players was released today, right? This uh uh TJ yeah. Talker. Does that that's the character's name, right? Now TJ Talker yes. with the dogs. Yes. yes, it is. Okay. So one, as team, everything is dogs in her life. I was super excited. Also, as a person of color, Bridget was excited to see a black man. I was like, yeah. person of color on here. And then plus the art is absolutely amazing. I think I saw that um the the occupation was like a, a stunt man. Yeah. And the miniature has like this guy in mid motion with the dog underneath. Anyways, I Bridget got super excited for multiple reasons when I saw that release this morning. So here's my question for you. What is the most fun aspect of playing that one? Oh, I will I will give it to Gon because if I don't, he will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh uh Every time we create characters, it's uh, it's a, jo a, jo a joint uh, a joint uh, thing. We mm -hmm. work together, but always it's like I do one skill, Adam does one skill, then we merge and we upgrade them, and we, uh, we came oh. up with two amazing skills like the that really feel really and truly uh, cascaderish uh, stuntsman. Uh, yeah, because I'm using because I'm imagining him like because it's 1920s. I'm imagining him uh -huh. as a uh, like a vaudeville character, like experienced in because it's not a move. It's not yet the proper movie times. It's uh, mm -hmm. all, only but like Buster Keaton and stuff happening and doing their own stunts. So like more more of a vaudeville stuntman. And there are two skills. One is uh, we call it uh, for now. Uh, still, it's a prototype name, but I really like it okay. through the window. Uh, you jump through, like the character jumps through the window, grabs the monster, and rolls with the monster down the train, holding the monster and pushing it off down with the speed. And like this is like super, like theatrically visual, the the movement down the stairs. And the other one is very much, uh, I would say, modern movie inspired, even though like it's a super like cliche trope. Uh, it's a roof jumping skill. 
Uh, oh! You can, yeah, you can ju jump the roofs, and the, the, uh, the, mo the more they're monsters, then you're kicking them off, kicking them in, jumping one oh, off, and moving oh, around. Oh. So yeah, this is this is very, very, for me, it's super exciting for the character to capture this essence of like dynamic and... Yeah, yeah. You, you see he is excited, really excited with this one. So. <laughs> That was a great handoff, Adam. You was like, let me leave that to the individual that is the most passionate about it because you sold that all day and twice on Sunday, babe. Well done. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. I was super excited when I saw that character revealed this morning. Um, it looks like my next one is gonna be are more monsters going to be released, backslash available in other expansions? <laughs> hard question. Hard question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Something. <laughs> so the next next question is. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh, yep. Yeah, listen. Don't threaten me with a good time. I got a list. <laughs> but, but, but we have to we have to say that uh, uh, people people are too good in their research and uh, we are scared. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this tribe, honey. We know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to. We have to uh, change our password or our computers or uh, notebooks because yeah, somebody is looking at. <laughs> Okay. All right. And I'm listen, don't threaten me with a good time. I'm I've got a list of questions in front of me, <laughs> which is going to bring me um to an honest question that I want to ask you two. Uh chat, I kind of want to hear from you too, but I know that you guys could probably take as much as we can give you. But we are human beings. We're working on two completely different time zones right now. And these two gorgeous gentlemen just finished up with an interview. Do you guys want me to choose one or two final questions and bring us to the close? Or do you have the endurance to go for another 30 minutes? Bring it on. Oh, you guys are like, let's go? Yeah. yeah let's yeah. go. All right. Like, <laughs> the questions are amazing. Your energy is amazing. Like, yeah, we're on here. Our side, on our side, it's two minutes to midnight. Uh, exactly. And uh, yeah, we can keep it going. Oh, my. So thank you, guys. Genuinely, thank you. It's almost midnight there. Lord have mercy. Oh, God. You guys yeah, I mean, the car heart. carriage is not a pumpkin yet, even. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, chat, they are willing to stay up past midnight for you. Um, I'm going to meet us halfway. I'm going to mother them a little bit. I'm going to hit this hard for 15 minutes, and then we're going to close it. You guys okay with that? All right. I love it. Now, I said 15 minutes. That means it's going to go 30, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's rock and roll. Next question. Are there any plans to have the train staff as characters? Oh, uh, we used to have train staff as characters, uh, as passengers on the train. And this is one of the mechanics that that got called. Uh, okay. It, it was just too much. It uh, it does add to the uh, to the breadth of the game. It adds okay. more, but we didn't feel like it added enough uh, to uh, to be to be a reason for it to stay because the game is already. It's really approachable, but it's a wide game, it's a broad game, mm -hmm. and it was and it was a bit, bit too much. And we don't want to bring uh, too many. We want to focus so that the the game you get out of the box is the game we can make. It is the the best thing we can create. Yeah, and also we we love uh, uh, you know how the characters in the, the on the train are divided because we have. Yeah. Uh, Heroes. We have our investigators. We have uh, uh, supporting characters, uh, and I'm talking about suspects. So people who have their mm. own names and all the stuff. And we have uh, uh, we have uh, crowd. We have uh, passengers with their own mood without names. Uh, so we know who is important, who is less important, and who is just a background. And uh, this was yeah. important important for us. We think that it will be not good to, uh, you know, put all miniatures there because you will see a lot of things that looks kind of the same because it will be weird if we make, uh, I don't know, passengers uh, little and looking like childs. It will be not, <laughs> right. not immersive uh, uh, here. So, uh, yeah, so this is why. And also we change the mood and the states of the passengers quite often and dice are great to do that. Uh, we don't want to 
make a mini with a head that you're turning uh, yeah, to play the spinning stage. head. <laughs> we, we have monsters uh, on this train and uh, we don't want to make passengers looking like uh, one of them, so... Yeah, the, so, the hierarchy. Oh, ahead, the sorry. hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, the hierarchy that Adam uh, presented uh, with the uh, play, uh, the players, the suspects, and, and the passengers, it really helps with, like, as you said, you're not a board gamer. It really helps to ease you in the game. You look at the board, you look at the train, you look at the everything, and you know who is who. Like, you don't have a problem with uh, saying, "Oh, these are important." Like Adam, exactly like Adam said, the hierarchy is really obvious, uh, and we don't want to break it because the user experience, the approachability are super crucial for us so that yeah. uh, people that also come from the uh, tabletop RPG background feel comfortable in the board game. It's a proper board game. Don't get me wrong here. Yeah. It's a big game, but it is really smooth experience and we intended for, for it to be that. For it to be that way, yeah. And actually, this leads into an amazing question that Daria just teed up for me because she's brilliant. Um, this is coming from the chat too, I believe. How do you come up with the passengers as dice with different faces representing different emotions? And I can speak right now, just scrolling through the Kickstarter pages, the oscillating images that you have on some of these miniatures, what is like really mesmerizing. It's just super fun to interact with on the Kickstarter page. But they are super, the expressions are brilliant. Uh, yeah, it was uh, again. We, uh, I think, uh, one of uh, one would start this was uh, conversation mechanism because uh, we we create uh, a conversation mechanism that let you uh, speak to the passengers about the suspects to reveal the different clues about them. Yeah, and, do the proper uh, investigation as the investigators do. Yeah, we we don't want to uh, you know make a game that adapts only killing part of a tabletop RPG. It's mm -hmm. more about talking, especially when we talk about Call of Cthulhu. Uh, so uh, we think, OK, what can happen when you talk to someone and uh, when you, uh, you know, uh, tell something wrong or uh, oh. something that upsets somebody, he can go angry. Or when you, I don't know, ask someone about Hmm, did you see the vampire outside the window? He can panic because maybe he doesn't know about vampire yet. And uh, this is this is uh, why we need different moods. And yeah. uh, dice was just perfect for for this. So yeah. Oh, we kind of. Nice. I want to. I want to do is, uh, one thing. Uh, we kind of explored one uh, <laughs> weird way of doing that. Uh, I made a, a paper prototype with uh, passengers having a backpack, uh, like re really, <laughs> like a deck hold, like you have in, yeah, like a deck holder for cards that you yeah. would put cards in there, and they would store their like status, status and emotions and everything in a backpack, which is really cool as a component. Like the gimmicky part was amazing. But it was so fiddly and so not fun to play with. <laughs> no. Yeah, when, when, when you have 18 of those, it was crazy. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So it might come in some future as a standalone, like with five or six of these moving around, but certainly not 20 people with their own. It was like it was actually inspired by like the luggage of your life. Like you, you bring your own <laughs> oh. stuff with you. Yeah. That's a good metaphor. Which is a real, real good, like, narrative wise, but then again, super fiddly. <laughs> yeah. Super fiddly, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just, I feel like I could do another whole AMA with you guys just going through all the things that we tried that didn't work, but were still really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's so many things that go into this between your licensing and your copywriting and what's shipping. It's just, I can't, I, as someone who doesn't play board games and certainly has never, designed one i cannot imagine um just the process that this looks like i feel like that should be another ama hey kuba invite me back to do another <laughs> ama on like building a board game from scratch i want to i want to do that we're totally okay. on it uh, i would love that all right uh here's a question for you i have questions about this question oh are there really coffins in the game okay okay yeah i also have some questions about <laughs> that question <laughs> yeah, so uh, the answer is yes, there are coffins. There are small, nifty little coffin miniatures. And when a passenger dies, uh, you put a coffin on them. Yeah, uh, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. 
And so you know that the passenger is dead. Yeah, but, <laughs> but these are not real coffins and real passengers. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, these are not like pine boxes. <laughs> <laughs> And oh you, my you see this because shipping costs are really low, so you know. Oh, that that is that is that is amazing. I love that. There's a that, oh your your investigator is deceased. We have a spot for that. That is there's coffins in the game. That's that's I love you guys for that one. That's funny. All right, all right. Um, do you have any problems with four players with regards to seeing inside of the train when sitting around the table? Oh, that okay. is a very interesting question when it comes to like as the as a as a player interacting with the actual game that's a great question good yeah. job chat yeah that's that's true uh uh you can you can play uh, of course as you want but uh, we intend to design this game that uh, the train itself and the board is like a stage for you so you are sitting in front of it and uh, everything is uh, designed that it's uh, it's better to uh, sit on one side or on the sides, not yeah, like in the, the back in the theater. of the train. Oh, yeah. because okay. you have you have uh, you know walls, uh, back walls on the on the train, and this is uh, uh, much better. But of course, you can play sitting on the other side. We always explain the game sitting on the other side, but so we still can see everything. But uh, we we suggest to to play sitting on the one. Yeah, so there, there's no like visual or like mechanical problems with sitting all around, but the intended and the best experience is all people sitting on one side of the table, as in like a movie theater and watching the events un, un, uh, unfold yeah. in front of your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and also uh, so on BGG, one one person right that, uh, and we don't think about that to be honest, but one person right that it helps in feel of cooperative because you are working hand to hand you are seeking together right. and the against the, yeah, the, the train. so yeah, the feel of cooperation uh it's it's interesting we didn't uh, didn't think about that before but now i will keep that answer yeah <laughs> and also we uh, kept the players uh, like the things that player need it's only it's just the player board so it's like 25 centimeters wide okay so yeah uh, also, everything is, is compartmentalized, it's right in front of you. Okay. Yeah. And there is yeah. like, you don't need anything. So, as long as you fit on one side, or you could play on a round table and just push the board a bit further and go in a circle, everything in the game will fit in front of players easily. So, it's just a matter of gathering people around. Good answers. Chad actually agreed with you on that one too. Great answers on that one. Honestly, guys, from an inner interactivity, interconnectivity, uh, as a word choice, that was a great question from Chad because, like, <laughs> that's just something as me as a as a as a non board gamer, as a novice board gamer, wouldn't consider. Like, well, how do I interact with the actual train, the module that's sitting in yeah. front of me? Like, that's a that was that was a good question. Well done, guys. All right. It looks like, unless production staff is going to snag any more for me, it looks like I might be down to my final five is what we're working on. Oh, so you guys can roll great. out your necks and your shoulders, and uh, yeah. we'll get you guys into bed here soon. All right. Um, unless, uh, just random question here, like, you actually going to go to sleep after this, or are you guys going to go back to work? How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not time to sleep for me yet, but uh, for me, it's normal. I, I love working at night, to be honest. So it's not so weird uh, during the campaign. And as, uh, and as I said, I see a proper rest in front of me, so <laughs> I'm really right. looking forward. But after they, this, like this, I'm still into uh, more questions. These are really good questions. And also, I really like them also, not only because it's super fun to be here and answer the questions, but also they give a real good uh, glimpse into what people think about the game and what, what is important for them. Yeah, Good point. So it will for sure affect the way we approach the next like small. Obviously, the game is almost ready, but it's not y ready yet. And we will still all of these questions will be uh, in our heads when we'll be talking yeah. about certain points. And I'm for sure we'll be spending with Adam a lot of time looking at the chat, rereading everything you guys write. Yeah. yeah. And looking if we do actually deliver on what you on what you guys expect, because these things are super important because you yeah. expect them and we can do that. So we should do it. 
Yeah, and we cannot uh, unhear this. So it was it was already told. So it is in our head already. And yeah, this Guys, is how it works. Designers who approach their craft with empathy is just one of the most beautiful things that you can get in creation. It just it just really is. I just every every single time one of you guys pause to go, hey viewer, your questions matter or your feedback matters because this this and this, and we have an opportunity to actually integrate it into the experience, like. I want to play games with you guys. All right. Next one we have. Um, will the foiling be more like Pokemon cards, solid holo glitter, or like fancy poker cards, metallic sheen, extending, or and or icons? Okay, okay. I will pass it totally to uh, go on because you're uh, like, oh, that's we, you. <laughs> no, we have we have uh, always our uh, things that are important to us in game we create, and sometimes it's a very, very little thing. Uh, for example, I'm a little color blind, so I sometimes focus, okay, don't put this color here because I cannot see it and it's uh, uh, it's not good. And when we talk about foiling cards, oh, God, come the, on. This, is... this is his, uh, his yeah. This is all you, boo. <laughs> yeah, like, when I your... first heard we are doing a game with a big company, the Chaosium is, I was like, this is my time. This is me having bling on everything I want, having gold foil and proper foil, hollow foil and everything. And I'm pushing from the day one for everything I love to have it. The production team is obviously pushing back on it <laughs> uh, because I would love to have everything folded all the ways possible. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, actually, the, the the foil will be uh, different components, will be uh, different types of foil. Also because uh, we believe very strongly with Adam that everything in the game that is should not only be uh, beautiful and fun when we add to the visuals, but also serve some purpose. Okay. And one thing we will do is uh, using the, uh, the foil and the, the, the different styles of it uh, to help differentiate between some like ideas like the scopes of the game so uh i Im imagine things that are tied to the occult stuff uh like the uh, artifacts and the uh the, the magical tomes uh the essence uh will be a shimmering foil uh so that you know it's tied to the occult and mm. i would love for i don't know like for the mm -hmm. i'm not sure what will be in because we're still talking with people we're still talking with the production team but for uh, for what i would prefer personally like to have i don't know cars and passengers to be gilded uh, so you know this is like the the, the bling the the, uh, the first class uh this is the most expensive train it ever was <laughs> yeah. i mean the orient express coming from paris to, yes. uh, to the constantinople it's such an amazing and giant venture, and they actually yeah. did have this, uh, this, this is ridiculously expensive train tickets, and everything, and being able to show this and also to connect this. So, like the player parts is this thing, uh, and the other thing is the other type of foiling. So it would also help players to connect with the game on the on the base of like on the narrative. Oh, and also I love just I just love bling. <laughs> you like, and then plus the bling, baby, the bling. It's about the bling. I'm, bling, bling. I'm not sure bling. if the production staff know what uh, what they're doing when they pass this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now now it was it was your time gone to uh, get this agenda. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing! Chat is falling out right now about the foiling comments right now. That is <laughs> amazing. Okay. Um, I have my final questions on here. A, a few of these like really rapid fire questions because I'm looking at the time. We're about 15 minutes to close. I told you I was going to be 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit these like really quick answer ones and then I'm going to save a couple of the heavier ones for the very bottom of it. So we're almost there, guys. You guys right. are doing absolutely incredible. Um, quick rapid fire question. Any plans on a five player option? Ah, no, we do no. we do not recommend playing the game with five players we feel yeah. it plays best with one between between one and four uh yeah. obviously there is no player count police <laughs> happening around uh yeah so that but we strongly recommend one to four is the amount of uh, players because uh you get to play a set amount of turns and playing with more players gives you fewer turns per player and your yeah. agency oh. on the game just lowers and so that 
the amount of fun you get with more people. I love playing with uh, more people. Usually, I play with uh, the more the more the merrier. But then again, you want to get some of your actions to matter, and the the, the more the game is stretched out, the, the fewer yeah. it does. So four, we feel, is like a proper count. It's super okay. fun with that amount. Five would be a bit stretching it. Okay. Okay. Transparent and straightforward. Absolutely love it. Uh, next one I have that's a rapid fire. Can you buy more than one game at once on Kickstarter? Yes, of course. You can. Okay, so you can buy one. Buy... Come on, bring up. He's buy as like, buy about a crate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it's just it should it should be like it should be super easy like just uh, pledge and just uh, put the add-ons click 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 and you buy more you get more copies you get more of everything that comes with the yeah. campaign. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna tee this up to you, Adam. I'm gonna let you choose your fate on this one. <laughs> Would you rather hear this next question that is fluffy and fun, or do you want me to put you on the spot for show and tell? <laughs> okay, uh, I I think uh, the uh, the second way will be will be great. Let's, We're gonna go let's start with the second spot? question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think going is better with the fluffy ones. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Then we will tee you up here for the second one. Uh, Kuba just gave me the green light. Would you be so kind to show us the prototype behind you to see how big the box is gonna be? Okay, yeah, it will be uh, it will be uh, funny because I use my uh, computer now. <laughs> it's standing on the prototype, so this was my stand. This is how usable this game is. You can even put a computer. Okay, could you turn it around? Maybe we could see some cities on the box. <laughs> oh, very, very, very funny, very funny. But yeah. Oh, yeah. is it the Rialto Bridge? It all, yeah. That's a big box, baby. Yeah, actually, yeah, Adam, fun fact: Adam fits in. Adam actually fits into the box. No, no, no. no. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. Y'all know I don't fit in that box. <laughs> that box oh. is amazing. Oh, that was show and tell. Show and tell was brilliant. Which means I am throwing up the fluffy question to you. Here's your fluffy, fluffy question. What would you personally like to hear in the soundtrack? Ooh. I, that's a good one, right? Yeah. yeah. I actually do really, really like the uh, train tracks vibe thing. So like this repetitive uh, background sound. I really like the, the for me this is the most important part that I could feel like this like this slow pacing because there are the when you ride the train there are two types of like there's this like, chuck, 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 the, the very often one and there is yeah. this this quite not so often when the when the tracks track when their tracks joins and there's like every 20 30 seconds there's like chuck, 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 oh uh, and this uh -oh. one like giving you the pacing like the Time is passing. It's not super fast, it, but it's there. It's there. It's inevitable. I like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait, wait to pick that one. Yeah. All uh, right, guys. I, I will add if I can uh, tell about the music. Yeah, I, I think we are in the uh, 20s, and the uh, 20s uh, were a lot about jazz, uh, I think. So a little jazz vibe in the music in the background uh, will be great. And maybe this is a little hint for something. Oh, a hint. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I know you guys have some great stuff in store. I don't know the specifics of what's in store, but I've been watching the company Slack. I was like, there's great things coming. I was like, really? I was excited about the miniature that dropped this morning. What else y'all got in your pockets? I'm excited to see. Okay, all right. Uh, this is a, it's not a heavier question, but it's a full body question. So yeah. this one is, we're ready for it. You guys got this. You guys are experts right now. You've been crushing this for the last hour and a half. Uh, how does Horror on the Or Express, uh, compare to other games that you guys have designed? Similarities, differences, and then games inspired you. I know. Ooh, I'm, I'll okay. copy this one into the chat just so you guys can see all of it because that's a lot of questions, but it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is great, uh, great one. Uh, for me, I I always when I uh, design games start to 
uh, design something new. And this is why, again, I love design, co-designing games because this is totally different, uh, uh, different point of view that uh, Go On brings to uh, to that game. And uh, uh, we see a lot of things in similar way, but also mm. in the details there are great difference that give this game vibe that I cannot create uh, myself. So uh, yeah. uh, this is, uh, uh, this is, I think, the, uh, the difference. Uh, and uh, we adapt something specific here. We adapt, uh, again, a uh, tabletop RPG campaign. And uh, I'm an RPG player for years, uh, and I love that. Uh, uh, that ga those games, and uh, I want to bring it here, in as we said before, in a different ways. Focus mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, conversation, on investigation, on that part. Not only killing monsters, because we have a lot of games about killing monsters, and I, I create a couple of games about killing monsters or monsters killing you. It depends, but. Uh, uh but i think this is uh, this is the uh the big uh, big difference this game is uh, is uh, about something else and we have specific mechanism for uh, mm -hmm. for that uh and about existing uh, games uh, i think a uh, lot of games inspire us and we even don't know uh, all of them uh, i mean we we cannot say uh each inspiration we have because it's uh, very organic when you play games and we play a lot of games uh, also yeah. together uh, you are inspired in different moments and you don't even figure out sometimes that you take something some inspiration from one game or another but uh, for sure uh, we look closely to uh, some cooperative games that yeah. uh, we both uh, uh, love we uh, uh we were inspired by some uh, solution from uh, mm -hmm. thailand because uh, we both uh, uh, really like this uh, this game uh we also uh, played together uh a couple of months ago uh pandemic uh, legacy uh, yeah. because, uh this is cooperative game with some uh, some story with some legacy vibe and, uh, and campaign mechanic and campaign mechanic and i never plays uh, pandemic legacy i play the uh, core version but not this and uh, we play it like 16 hours uh, in a row uh, something like this to finish the yeah. whole game oh, and geez. we play it together uh, and uh, and of course it was great because uh, we said to everybody else to you know our uh, families friends that we are working. This is research. Sorry for yeah, that. Yeah, this is research. It's yeah. market research, guys. That's what it is. Sorry. Yeah, this is this is the fun part of this uh, this job. Really, you can do research playing a game. And yeah, how about you, babe? Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, most similarities I would say about uh, my designs is uh, every single game I do is very much different and very different genre even. Yeah. And, but the similarities, I would say, I always strive to make the game as approachable and as smooth within the genre. And obviously, working with Adam, I'm heading for the big C's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a big game. And the, for what is, I would say, my part of the what I'm bringing and pulling to uh, is that the game is just the bare minimum for what it needs to be the amazing and epic game that, uh, that the, the title and the, our cooperation pro promises. So this is uh, one big, big thing for me from the similarities. And from uh, what inspires me, uh, usually it's just the last 20 or 30 games I played. <laughs> uh, this is what it bring. And I play a lot. I've just, ch just ch checked it while Aldam was... Uh, the responding i played 57 new games this year already uh i games i have not played yet before wow so, research research the, the, so this is actually research, research. And every game i play is like i look at the game i was like oh this is cool or and i look for this exciting moments in me and i feel like this is a thing i would like to bring to people in, in the game i'm making and i just check whether it is 
transferable or not because if it's not i'm not cramming it and i'm not forcing it but if it's cool we're adding some more stuff to the game or like or even fixing because we don't want to re reinvent the wheel we also the play play the game right. play play other games to uh, get inspired and to also just take uh, elegant solutions from other games so that people will play the best game possible in the current time so like that we are not doing a 2004 game we're doing a 2024 game we just yeah. start yeah. trying to stay on the edge of the yeah we industry. stand on the shoulders of oh, people yeah. who create games before us before and, us uh, this yeah. is how it works in creative work so uh, yeah of course we are inspired uh, by by many uh, great games and designers and uh, yeah uh, yeah this is how it works and this could be yeah this could be really big inspirations like uh doing uh one thing you could easily see like from spirit island like the ritual card is very much akin to uh the uh to the card of like the the nation we are fighting in spirit island or like the scenario uh but there are some small things like uh with uh, with hopefully uh, voidfall re uh, kind of recently Mm -hmm. and the yeah. very neat iconography that goes there the way of using the icons how they merge and how this is still like we're not doing any type of this game at all but how well the iconography is done there we want to have that kind of quality of iconography here so we want to learn also on that and just bring this quality here so this yeah. is also the inspiration yeah. like directly gentlemen I need you guys to do me. I, I got to remember that Apple, when you're streaming, does the little weird hand thing. It's always free because I love the hard hands and it's always funny to see the hearts come out. So, <laughs> gentlemen, the one thing I need you two to do is to take a massive deep breath and pat yourselves on the back. We This train has arrived at its final destination. We are coming to a close. But because I am who I am and Kuba and Daria are who they are, we are going to sneak <laughs> one last question in here. But it's a fast one. Sure. It's a super quick one. And then uh, we will close out. And we oh, before get... that, I want to have a ooh, ooh. question for chat and for you, actually, because I'm really curious how many Chaga Chagas are before a choo-choo? What's the proper amount? <laughs> okay, uh, chugga as a word or chugga chugga? Am I doing oh, pairs or solo? You, uh, you can't. No, I need. I need. I need more specified instruction. Okay, hold on. Okay, a single words. Okay, okay. I'm at eight. I don't know what the rest of y'all are doing. <laughs> uh, uh, chat. We need to know how many chuggas come before the choo choo. And then, um, you gorgeous people, my last question for you here is, uh, what do you think the percentage is of the game content is from completion? How, what do you think you're sitting at right now? Okay, so uh, when we talk about core box uh, and the, the stuff people will uh, see on Tabletop Simulator, uh, it's... 90% finished and what we will be doing is development style so polishing everything making it uh, 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 you know better more balanced uh, in between and all the stuff this is uh, uh, this is the feedback we will uh, be gather here and if we talk about some additional stuff uh, because the campaign is uh, is running and we we're reading the comments we're looking at what uh, what people write what they want uh it's still uh this is still uh progression uh, uh -huh. we have some some things uh, done some are uh still on our tables and we are working uh, now on them because we won't have possibility to uh add things from the feedback from people yeah so this window for them yeah exactly it's it has to be because uh, uh, this is the important part of uh, crowdfunding and uh, it will be a bad choice to not uh, use the crowd uh, ideas and uh, and especially such an amazing them. crowd like i mean the questions you got here they're brilliant right yeah. They were yeah they're brilliant they were stunning uh adam golem you guys are incredible 
Thank you for designing with integrity. Thank you for designing with empathy. Thank you for staying up past midnight to be here to do this interview on behalf of Chaosium. We really appreciate it. Chaosium, thank you so much for inviting me and having me on to be host. Uh, Kuba and Daria, who are in the background collecting questions and giving me feedback and having me correct stuff. You guys are amazing. It's late for you too. One of you guys is getting tacos. I don't eat tacos at midnight, but I feel like that's an experience that I need to like really embody for myself. The very last question, not for you guys, is a <laughs> it's a question, <laughs> it's a question from right. Daria to me, which is hysterical. Oh. And I'm for sure gonna read it. Hey, Bridget, are you actually gonna play the game now? And the answer <laughs> oh, is yeah. yes. No, great. Success, Off of right? the pure strength of these two gorgeous individuals here, yes, I'm going to play the game. Chaosium Tribe, your questions were brilliant. Thank you for choosing to spend time with us today. Keep those questions going. Comment on the Kickstarter. And if you are not a backer, babe, this train is not going to be going forever. Hop on that Kickstarter now. Let's set some records. Let's continue to blow the doors off of being awesome. And guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. Have a wonderful night, morning, day, wherever you are. Mwah. Bye, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Thank very you much. so much. And also hearts from us. Hearts <laughs> from us. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I, I, you know, I don't know. This is not I'll teach you. It's okay. I'll teach you. I'll it's teach like you. a pointy we'll apple. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Beautiful. I think we're going to hang out until Daria gives, gives us all clear that we are off of the line, which means, which means they might they be might watching us be awkward, awkward right now, which is great. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Plan the time with you. We are we off, are guys. Off, it looks, it like, looks we like we are in the, the exit, exit screen right, right now. now. No, we're not. We're not. We're not.